But we also want to address the subject of sex and religion. I mean, all major religions have something to say about sex. Um, oftentimes not particularly positive. You, know, you get the hell and damnation and fire and brimstone kind of stuff. And we wanted to avoid that. So we were looking for you know, a real inspiring kind of story. We believe we found one um, in a United Methodist minister named John Griffin. It's a fascinating story. I always knew about this little church on the corner here in West Hollywood and always kind of wished that I could be there because I really thought a lot could happen. But um, I, I kind of got shipped around. I, I spent a year in Long Beach and two years in Huntington Beach, both times as associates. I, 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 in traditional I, churches? In United Methodist churches, yeah. Long Beach first, United Methodist and Huntington Beach community. And I didn't make a very good associate. I don't particularly like the dress up. I kind of like just, I just, and plus, and plus I, I kept introducing the whole issue of, of, of gay and lesbian issues and AIDS issues. And um, um, in any case, I ended up then in San Diego for six years in a little church on the border of Mexico. And, um, but always knocking on my supervisor's door saying, what about Crescent Heights in West Hollywood? And um, it just always seemed out of reach for, for whatever reasons. And in 1998, um, I was diagnosed with AIDS. And, um, and, um, and then the following year, in 99, having not died, um, um, I went to the bishop. I had gone to the bishop in 98 and told him that I, that I was positive and informed him that I would not be silent. Where, whereas the church will kick you out if you tell the bishop that you're gay, gay and practicing. <laughs> and avowed. Avowed, that's the avowed. I'm learning that. Avowed, no, avowed is telling the ah. bishop. <laughs> uh, practicing is saying um, that I'm s sexually engaged mm -hmm. in, in, in a homosexual lifestyle. Mm -hmm. However, the church cannot discriminate against persons with handicapping conditions, including HIV. So I figured I was fairly safe. So I went back to the bishop, I went to the bishop, I should say, and in 98 and informed him that, that I was positive. He was cool with that and uh, said a little prayer for me, which was wonderful. And um, I informed him that I was not going to be silent about this issue. There had been other clergy in our conference who had AIDS who, were, who kept it a secret and um, then eventually went on disability and, and, and then died and left many people kind of in the dark about what, what had happened. And, and some people angry that they had been left out of these people's lives. In any case, I didn't want to do that. So it was my opportunity to be um, open in a way that perhaps I never could be. And so I gathered my congregation, old congregation together and told them and was quite well accepted. And um, it, was, it was an amazing act of grace on their part because it was a congregation of many children and families and, and you know, they just, didn't flinch, and I had Carposi sarcoma, little purple spots all over me, and, and and just their love was constant. Well, the year passed, and I didn't die. I didn't know if I would die, but you know, it always wonders what is going to happen. And I decided that this would be a good strategic move. So I knocked on the door of the bishop again, and informed him that all was well, the KS was gone essentially, um, and medicines were working. And I had been at this church for six years, and I know it's not the practice, in fact, it's not the practice at all for a clergy to tell a bishop where he or she wants to go. And he said, well, where do you want to go? And I said, I really, really think I could do something at Crescent Heights. And um, he listened to my, my, my uh, argument. Uh, my, my interest in theater and my interest in, in, in the entertainment community, my belief that in this community a pastor who has AIDS makes a certain statement about our view towards persons with AIDS, that we don't view persons with AIDS as somehow victims and, you know, um, but, but rather we believe in empowering all people. And so here I am.